So in this segment, we're going to talk about how the curl of a vector field relates to conservative vector fields. Okay. So you'll recall that in two dimensions, okay, in 2D, if I have a vector field with components PQ and if that vector field is conservative, then we know that by Clairaut's theorem, partial Q partial X minus partial P partial Y equals zero. Or sometimes that's written as partial Q partial X equals partial P partial Y. Now, we also know that the converse of this statement is true if the vector field is defined on a simply connected region. If the vector field is defined on a simply connected region and if partial Q partial X equals partial P partial Y, then we know that the vector field is conservative. Okay, so the 3D analog of this, so theorem. If we have a vector field in three dimensions, so let's say if F is PQR, and we know that this vector field is conservative, then the curl of the vector field, or curl F, which is del cross F, is zero. So we're assuming that the vector field is conservative, and we're also assuming that the um, second partial derivatives of F, or the partial derivatives of P, Q, and R, are defined and continuous. All right, so why is this true? Let's prove this. So proof, suppose, the vector field F equals the gradient of some function. So we are making an assumption that our vector field is conservative. Then I can say that the curl of F, or del cross F, equals del cross, well, F is the same thing as gradient F. So why does this equal zero? Why would this equal zero? So you might expect that this is going to equal zero because you see that we're crossing del and another del f, gradient f, even though um, these aren't, this isn't a real determinant because we're not putting in scalars, but you might expect this to be zero because you already know that a vector cross itself is zero. Vector A cross vector A is zero for any three-dimensional vector by definition of the cross product. But I'm going to show you how this works anyways and prove that it's zero. So um, del cross F, which I just said, if F is conservative, equals del cross gradient F. And we're going to cross uh, uh, partial X, partial Y, partial Z with uh, the gradient of F, or partial F, partial X, partial F, partial Y, partial F, partial Z. Okay, so I'll write this out in uh, the matrix, or determinant, so I have I, J, K. Uh, the second row is going to be partial X, partial Y, partial Z, and then my third row is going to be the gradient of F, DF, partial F, partial X, partial F, partial Y, 
partial f partial z. And what does that give me? So I'm going to have the derivative with respect to y of partial f partial z. So that's going to be second partial of f partial y partial z. And then I'm going to get minus uh, second derivative partial z partial y. Okay, my next component is going to be uh, second uh, derivative of f partial z partial x minus the second partial of f partial x partial z. And lastly, my third component is going to be second partial, partial x, partial y, and then minus, I'm going to get partial x, par or, sorry, partial y, partial x. But then we know that, what happened here? Okay, but then we know that um, by Clairaut's theorem, mixed partial derivatives commute. So that means that uh, by Clairaut's theorem, we're gonna, we know that fyz is the same thing as fzy, right? fzx partial z partial x is the same thing as partial x partial z and partial x partial y is going to be the same thing as partial y partial x and so therefore I get that uh, del cross f is the vector 0 0 0 the 0 vector and curl equals 0 so if uh, f is a three-dimensional vector field, and if that vector field is conservative and the second partial derivatives of f are defined in continuous, then the curl of that vector field equals zero. All right, so let's just do an example here. So example. Is f x z cosine y z conservative? All right, so let's uh, Let's check if the curl is zero. So curl f or del cross f is going to be, okay, I like to write out my determinants. So I've got my partials and then I've got xz cosine y. Z. Okay, uh, the derivative with respect to y of z is zero, and the derivative with respect to z of cosine y is also zero. The derivative with respect to z of xz is x minus the derivative with respect to x of z is zero, and lastly, the derivative with respect to x of cosine y is zero and the derivative with respect to y of xz is 0. So I get that the curl of this vector field is 0, x, 0, which is not equal to 0, except in the case where x is 0. So curl f is not the 0 vector field, therefore f is not conservative. OK, 
Okay, so let's look at the um, let's look at the converse of this. Um, so our initial theorem is if f is a conservative vector field and the second partials of f are defined and continuous, I should add that in here, second partials of P, Q, and R are defined and continuous. If that's true, then the curl of F equals zero. All right, theorem. If the curl of F is zero and F is defined on a simply connected region. then F is conservative. So this is analogous to the 2D case. So if you recall in two dimensions, uh, if, um, if partial X partial, uh, I'm sorry, if partial Q partial X equals partial P partial Y and F is defined on a simply connected region, then F is conservative. Well, the same thing holds true here. In two dimensions, simply connected means the region doesn't have any holes. Um, we haven't really talked about what simply connected means in three dimensions, and defining that is a little bit beyond the scope of this course, but I'm just going to talk about a few examples of what simply connected means in three dimensions. Okay, so simply connected in 3D Alright, number one all of R3 if your domain is all of R3 that is a simply connected region. And that's really all you need to know for this class. I'm going to throw out a few more examples and um, just so you have a couple of more ideas about what simply connected could mean or not mean. So the first thing I'll just point out is this, and this notation means all of R3 without the origin, meaning there's a hole at the origin. This is actually also simply connected. Uh, a hole in three dimensions doesn't mean exactly the same thing that a hole in two dimensions means. So this would also be an example of a simply connected domain. Something that's not simply connected. So imagine we have a donut. So this isn't going to be very nice, but I'll do my best. There's a donut. Okay, so there's my donut. Uh, it's like a nice fat chocolate glazed donut. Um, so if R is in the region, er, sorry, in the shape of a chocolate donut, then in this case, R is not simply connected. My chocolate donut, chocolate donut is not simply connected. Okay, again, all you really need to know for this class is that all of R3 is simply connected. Later on, we will prove that if F is defined in all of R3 and the curl of F is zero, then F is conservative. <laughs>